Yo, it's Lux from Server Pro, and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to install and use the My Pet plugin. To install My Pet, head over to the link in the description, which will lead you to the Spigot page here. Click the download button, and then head over to your Server Pro control panel, and then into the plugins folder. Make sure that you run the server type that supports plugins, such as Spigot. Using our upload feature, upload the plugin file you just downloaded into the plugins folder, just like so. Then restart your server and you're ready to go. What this plugin allows you to do is have nearly any mob as a pet with different behaviors, skills and many other cool features. It's a very, very customizable and well-made plugin, so you can change pretty much anything you'd need to. Let me quickly show you how it works. Now, all these settings that I'm using currently are default as it runs well out of the box. Of course, I'll show you the things you can customize later on to make your server more unique. I have a mushroom cow here, which will be my pet. To make it my pet, all I have to do is left click it with a lead when it's damaged. This is because in the config right now, it's set this way. So now that it's my pet, you can see the name on top of it, and of course, it's following me. To make it stay in place, crouch and right click, do this again, and it will follow you again. If your pet gets stuck somewhere, you can type in slash pet call to make it teleport to you. Let's change your name right now. Type slash pet name, then the color like this, and then the name. It's a slightly different way of adding different colors, so make sure you check the wiki page for more information. You can check the info of your current pet by typing slash pet info. We can also store the pet by typing slash pet store, and then to get it back, just type in slash pet switch, and in this UI, you can switch to whatever pet you have. The max number of pets can be changed in the config. Now let's give it a class or a skill tree as it is referred in this plugin. To do this type slash pet choose skill tree. What you can see here are the default skill trees and when you hover over them you can see what skills each of them contain. Don't forget you can create your own custom ones too. There's even a skill tree editor built into this plugin. Let's choose PvP for example. With this, when I attack something, my pet will also attack it. You can quickly type slash pet stop to make it stop the attack and come back to you. Each pet also has a level which can be capped via configs, skill trees or even experience cap scripts. There are other commands and features to this plugin such as the slash pet shop command which will allow you to buy pets. Of course you'll need an economy plugin for that. Slash pet skill will show you its skills. Slash pet admin is the command you'll need to use if you're an admin or an owner of the server. All of the other commands are found on the wiki page, as well as all the permission nodes. Please ensure you explore that for a full set of features. Let me quickly go over the configs now. In the main config, you can have it check for updates and automatically download and replace the old versions. You can change the option whether the leash is consumed upon taming a pet. An option here for the max number of pets a player can store. You can change the way files are saved. You can use MySQL for example, change the respawn settings here, for example you can disable it completely so when a pet dies it doesn't respawn, or you can change the time it takes for it to respawn. If you don't know what something means, you can always refer to the wiki. So let's say I didn't know what these options here are, what I'd do is go to the wiki and on the left go to the setup, since we're on the setup stage, then go to the configurations since we're changing that, and then select the correct config type. Then search for the term you want to find. In this case, we're searching for the respawn times. And as you can see here on the right, it explains what these options are. Go ahead and make any changes to the rest of this config. The pet config is even easier. You can decide which pets can be tamed or which cannot. Change their stats like HP, speed and what they eat. You can change their leash requirement. Most of these are low HP, which means the mob has to be under 10% of its health. All leash requirements are found on the wiki page, as you can see. You can change the respawn time here for different pets. And of course, you can change the leash item too, which is the actual item you need to use to tame the mob with. The shop config is also quite self-explanatory. The pet shop allows players to basically buy pets. You can create as many custom shops with different pets, including different parameters for each pet. Currently, there are two shops. This all pets shop here, and then if I scroll down here, the baby pets shop down here. This here is the ID 
which is used in-game when doing slash pet shop and this is the actual name you'll see. You can also make any shop a default shop, so instead of typing slash pet shop and then the ID of the shop, you can just type in slash pet shop and then it'll open the default one for you. Then the position in the menu starting with zero, which is the first slot, then the icon and down here are the actual mobs you can buy as your pet. You can add different options to them, so for example you can have this bat here already have a skill tree of let's say PvP just by adding an option like this. Like before, all of these options and configs and how to change them can be found on the wiki. In the world group config, you can disable the worlds you don't want to have pets in. You can also group worlds together to have different pets. So for example, let's say I have another world which is a factions world and I don't want it to share any pets from my other world. I'll just make a new group and then put the world here. Now the faction world will have a completely different set of pets. It's that simple. Skill trees are basically like classes for your pets. Different skill trees allow for different skills for your pet to learn. You can create custom ones just by copying one of these over and changing the name and then changing what's inside the file. I'm not going to do that but instead I'm going to show you what you can do with the current ones. Let's go over the utility one. At the top we have the order in which the icons are, starting at zero which is in the top left. Then we have the description here with the custom colors. And strangely at the bottom you have the ID and the name. There is also a list of mob times you can have. So if you want only specific mobs to have access to the skill tree, then put them in here. Using the asterisk means all mobs are able to use the skill tree. Going up to the skill section, we can see what skills are included. There's backpack, pickup and life and others. And as you can see with every level up, you have upgrades. So under the backpack skill, at level 1 you get one roll, then at level 3 you get an extra one and so on. The backpack skill basically allows your pet to have inventory and you can access it with slash pet inventory. It's a really similar sort of things for the other skills too. Now you can edit them like this using the text editor, but you can also use the inbuilt skill tree editor, which we won't be going over in this video as it will take too long to do that. But if you want to know how to use it, check it out on the wiki page. Apart from that, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any plugin suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you have any issues with anything, contact our support team. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.